Alright, so today we have ourselves a good old gasoline engine. Uh, not really sure how many horsepower it is or anything. I took it off a weed whacker. Uh, the only thing is you can't start it without the plastic cover because the way this is built, um, uh, the crank is built into the plastic case which is kind of retarded. There might be a way I can take that out of there though. There might be a way I can... I don't really want to mess it up though, because once you know, once you take these things out, there's a spring inside of there, and that spring is really hard to put back in. Something I learned years ago about these strings is you want to put grease on them, because you'll notice they start to fray, and once you break the string, they're pretty hard to fix. All right, now. Reason why I'm making this video right now is because I just want to show you how to, um, uh, you know, if you find an engine in the trash and you want to, you know, before you even try and start it, you want to clean the spark plug, you want to check the fuel filter and stuff like that. Just make sure that the basic stuff is clean before you even try cranking it. Because if you find something in the trash and you just go and crank it, chances are it's not going to start right off the bat. You're going to have to do a few things. You're going to have to adjust. You're probably going to have to adjust a couple things. I mean, obviously. But uh, now this motor right here is, is seized at the moment. I mean, you can try and turn the piston, but it's locked. I'm going to show you how to unlock the piston too. Because uh, that's another good thing to know. Uh, these two cycle engines are probably the best engines a man has ever created. I mean, they're they're simple. When it comes to fixing them, they are the easiest engines to fix. Now, right here is something I want to point out to you on the spark plug. This right here would stop it from starting. See all the corrosion around that spark plug? That's why you always got to... Yeah, you know, that's why you always got to pop the spark plug off. I'm going to take the spark plug out of here in a minute. You know, and then inside of there, you should probably take a screwdriver and scrape that out. All right, so I'm going to take a spark plug out of here. R luckily, I like this motor because the spark plug's not, like, inside the motor. Some of them, you need a ratchet to take them out. Luckily, this one, you just need a regular. It's uh, probably... Oh, wow. It's not 5 8 Usually it's a 5 8 socket. Uh, just use a regular wrench. I mean, an adjustable wrench probably would work even better. Alright, 9 16 Usually 5 8 Hang on. I don't know if I have an adjustable wrench up here. Alright, I'm not recommending you do this, but I'm going to try and get it off with a pair of wire cutters. <laughs> don't ever do this. But I have a wrench outside on the bike, and I don't feel like going out there and getting it. So I'm going to take this off of here with these. Never mind. As a matter of fact, that ain't going to work. I'm going to stop being lazy. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to get that wrench, and I'm going to do the job the right way. Uh, they're not hard to take off. It's just a matter of, you know, getting it to turn that one time and it comes right off. Alright, there's been a little change of plans. I came across my trusty old pipe wrench. I think that'll get the job done. This wrench is from the 1940s. That's how to take out the plug. Anyway... First thing you want to do, take out your spark plug, and you want to look here. You want to notice the gap right there. See the gap? This spark plug, believe it or not, is in good condition. I'm just going to wipe it on my pants. Whenever you do this, just wipe it off so you can get a good spark. A good spark. Sometimes you might have to take a piece of sandpaper and sand inside of that gap right there so there's nothing building up. 
But overall, this is a good spark plug. All we got to clean is the top there because there's a little bit of corrosion. It's made by Champion. They're a good company. And uh, later on in the video, if I don't, if the battery don't die, I'm going to show you how to unseize this motor. You pour a little bit of motor oil down in that hole. And what you do is you take a screwdriver. It's better to use, uh, I find, a flathead with duct tape on it so you don't damage the piston. Pour some motor oil in there and you tap the screwdriver with a hammer until it moves. Alright, I don't know how bad this is seized. So what I'm going to do... So right now I'm just going to tap it with the pipe wrench. Now that the spark plug's off, I know there's no compression in the motor, so you don't have to worry about that. Just got to tap the piston. Okay, I felt it move. Now I didn't put any oil in there. I didn't even use any oil. So really you don't even need a lot of oil. I just tapped it, the screwdriver, and now when I push down it should go down. Turn, you want to try and turn this and tap it at the same time. Alright. And there you go, just like that. Look at that. Now I can hear a little bit of clicking in there, I mean the uh, piston rings and stuff are probably shot, but it does turn now. And you try doing that with a four cycle engine, you'll bend the crankshaft. I don't like four cycle engines, you know, they put out a hell of a lot of power and they go really fast, but when it really comes down to it, is that big machine worth fixing once it breaks down you know what I mean someday I'm gonna figure out how to put this engine on on the bicycle I have now we're one step closer because now we finally got it to unseize pistons not in the greatest shape but it is working it turns I'm sure it'll fire as long as I get some good gasoline uh, the magneto seems pretty good to magnetos you can fix them if they don't you know if they stop working usually magnetos are good for a while as long as you don't let them get too hot all right the battery on the camera died I had to charge it for a couple minutes I can't record too long but as I was saying if you try and unseize a four-stroke engine you're gonna have some trouble you know what I mean if you got one of these two cycle motors, man, hold on to them because they're good engines. They're probably one of the best engines you'll ever find. One of the very few engines that still have a carburetor, something that you can fix. You know, a lot of the four cycle engines, they don't build them with carburetors anymore. Now they got that fuel injection bullshit. You can't fix that stuff, man. Once it breaks, you have to replace it. At least with this, you have a carburetor. And by the way, another thing, you want to, you know, keep your fuel filter clean, too. But, uh, that's not really that important. That's really not even that dirty. Uh, uh, if you have an engine with a carburetor, really, man, hold on to it. Because if you have to, you can take this carburetor apart. See, look, you can adjust your fuel-air mixture. You have your choke right here. You know what I mean? I mean, really, you, you on a on a um, fuel injection engine, you don't get none of that. You turn the key, and it either starts or it doesn't start. You know what I mean? There's no adjustments. There's no way to get it running. There's nothing. There's nothing, dude. It either works or it doesn't. It's like a digital circuit board. At least with this, you have your adjustments. You know, you can tinker around with it and get it running. That's all for today. Peace, guys.